Hi everyone, my name is Jason and today I'm going to talk about 3D printing in a sort of entertainment industry. For a little bit of myself, I'm a, you can say that it's a graphic designer, but more like a user interface designer for a web development company. So my dream is to do like cinematic props and like for games or like for like cinema or movies and all that. So these are what I wish to do. And for in Singapore, if let's say you have the only chance that you can have to do all these things is either like cosplay or like maybe Halloween. So I'll, I'd like to show you some of my things that I do for Halloween. This is what I did a few years back. It's the first 3D print uh, Halloween costume that I did for myself. And I gotta run through the process. I, some of the process, I think uh, Han Yang had uh, talked about it. And on your left side, you can see that like, the, the mask is split into two, uh, four. So it's printed separately into four. And then going together, like, you can see the seam lines. Those are like uh, some of my special concoction. If you like, you can ask me later. But um, that one holds very fast and it bonds very well. And then after that, send it down and prime. This is the state of uh, the gray color is what you see when it's prime. So everything is smooth. And then after that, it's sprayed color and then added a little bit of like weathering to make it look older. And yeah, if you guys didn't know, this is the Jason's mask. Uh, it's like uh, to show, yeah, it really relate to my name. So that, yeah, you guys can remember me better or something? <laughs> yeah. It's like a cheating thing. Okay, so this is me in my costume for the Halloween. And after this, I feel that, oh, okay, I did this, but I want to up the skill of uh, my skill. So I did something crazy. Okay, this is downloaded online. You can find it online. But uh, I printed this and then sanded it and make it like chrome, like metal stuff. So this is a lot of sanding and like finishing all that stuff, like repetitive. But then after this, I try to fit it with my face, like, oh, you can't fit, it's like too big or too small, and then it's like very thin. And so I decided to like customize my, uh, my head to the helmet. So I went to, uh, yeah, this is, this is a better picture. Then I went to rebuild the whole thing from program so called SOLIDWORKS. You guys from engineering, uh, feel you might know this program. So, uh, yeah, this is the video of the different parts because I want to like add in those mechanisms inside like motors or what. Then you can see like the jaw, the jaw movement, sorry. The jaw movement is separate because when the helmet, the face blade comes out and I want the jaw to move forward and all that. So, I did this and then after all the iterations of printing to test fit, the middle one, the white one, is the one I chose because it like fits the best and like snug fit, and the proportion doesn't look weird. So after that, okay, you can see these are the assemble uh, parts, and I test to see whether it fits close together and how it comes up and how it looks when it comes up. So it's, it's to show like the maximum face to show like you can see my face. Rather than like some of the face plate that's like hide half of your face. Then this uh, after that I spray paint and all that. And this is how it looks like when it's sprayed and put it on. So the proportion itself looks like the head is very big, but with the shoulder pad and all it looks fine. So okay, after this, I have to see this thing. So it's like when uh, this is BB-8, so for you guys who didn't know, it's a, a sort of like a new robot from Star Wars. Then when I see this, it's like, oh, okay, that's uh, CGI because it can't be rolling and all that and do all these things. But then after that, uh, they doing like some special or presentation. The Star Wars guy actually showed the actual moving one, and then everyone's like shocked. So it's like, oh, this is a freaking real robot. Then, oh, okay, and then everyone started to think of how it works and all that. And then I came across this, some guy building the small version of PBA using this, and I went to bought this. 
the we call it spiro, right? And then hack it up, cut it in half. So I figured out, oh, okay. Then that's uh, in the middle. In the middle, I think you can see. I don't know where it works. Okay. This thing is like an axis. So what they did is they hack it and put little magnets on top, and then they 3D print a little head on top so it uh, stays on top. And then when the thing rolls, the axis holds the head on top. Okay, so this is how the rough the idea of how it works. And okay, I make this, and it managed to work roughly. And then I tried to okay start my painting job and all that. And during that process, I have to find out this guy. Like I, I, I went online and searched and then found that found out about these guys. So these guys are stuck with uh, like two two people. One of them they built a 3D model of a BB-8, a like, uh, full scale BB-8, and then upload it online. So everyone can download and print their own BB-8 in life size, full scale. So it's like oh, okay, I have this, I can download, I have a 3D printer, so why not? So I started printing. And then this is the head, these are all the parts. And then after that, I, I realized that, okay, it's really big. And I decided to just, okay, I just stick to the head and make it really nice and all that finishing. And yeah, this is the process of sanding and smoothing everything, priming. I use a black primer because I can see the, the opposite white when I sand it in. Then, then spray and then test fit some like small LED light. And then this is the result. So I got a styrofoam body. So okay, this is my this is my BB-8. I like it. And then uh, some guy online saw this and then decided to ask me like just, they want to feature me and then ask me how uh, whether I will be printing the whole body. Then I'll be like, hmm, that's a good idea. Probably I'll do it. So I say yes. And then I got into got myself into something that I. I don't know whether I will be able to do it. So I only have one month to print everything because it's like, I think the, the event is called Game Start. So they want me to print the whole body in one month. So I just run my printer 24 7 and I printed all the, the parts, panels. So these are the different parts of the body. And this is sand it down and then I prime it. And see all the white spots is. When you the the reason why you see the white spots are when you do the gray primer you can see the the effects easier because of the light hitting and all that stuff. So you put it, cover it up, and then this is the head because I want to mechanize the whole thing. So it's like a future project I want to make the whole thing move. So I realized that the head itself is very heavy. So I decided to recast it in a resin to make it lighter. So this is like the blue thing you see covering is a silicon. Then when it dry, I added some of the the, the little cup thing. It looks like a little like a sea marine mine thing, but those are called keys. And what the keys does is the white thing is like a mother mold the shell. So it's like a soft silicon. Then the keys, and then you cover the white thing over it so that. Um, it holds the shape well after you take out the inside. It's like if if you guys confuse again, uh, I can explain it after that. But this is the main process of what they do in the entertainment industry for casting repetitive helmets or all the all the mechanical parts if they want it hollow inside. So after the whole thing hardens, so I have an exterior hard shell and then an interior uh, soft shell and then the void inside. So I pour the liquid resin, the liquid plastic, then sway it around, and then it becomes a, a positive of the uh, duplicate. So you can see the white one over there. It's the duplicate of the the BB-8, the actual one. 3D printer one is that the, the other one. Okay. Anyone? Like, I think it's quite fast. Okay. If you have any questions, you can talk to me later. Then. Okay, I carry on with the painting job for the, the panels. Then you can see I'm masking. This this I got I, I think kinda of cover the masking. Like how you how you hide some of the parts and then spray over it. But I use like those masking tape, very thin ones, and then cut out the the parts that I wanted to color. So the rest of the parts don't get uh, the paint on.
So you can see the white part and the silver part and the orange part are different colors. And then here are the different parts with weathered and painted everything. And then assembled together. And this is me uh, in Changi Airport with the stormtroopers behind chasing me. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? No, uh, the mold itself, um, I use a 3D printer part and then I take uh, silicone, it's like a liquid thing, then I pour it over and then when it hardens it becomes like rubber. Then after that I take a uh, plaster, the, it's like a plaster of Paris with, uh, they call it like a canvas thing, like a, so I put it on the canvas and then plaster of Paris so it has the shape, like a shell thing, then I can take it out and then I pull out the rubber, and then that's the, the 3D printer part, right? Then so I unfold the rubber again, and then put on the shell. So inside is empty, but the, the hard uh, exterior shell holds the shape. So I just pour the liquid resin inside, and then when the liquid resin hardens, I pull out everything again, then I have the positive. Yeah. So I think people with uh, history of like, cosplay and all that, you guys might know what's, what's going on. Yeah. So, does that answer your question? Any any more questions? So, so you use a special kind of object. It's supposed to stick together with the right? Oh yes. Uh, the the one I'm using is uh, okay. I print in mainly in ABS because it's hard and I want it to roll around. But uh, the concoction works in PLA. The concoction is actually. Uh, super glue gel, like a gel form, not a liquid form, and then you mix with darken powder, or some people mix with flour. Then you mix together and it creates like a creamy, like a toothpaste thing, and then when you put it over the joint and put it together, it hardens very fast because it's super glue, and then it becomes very hard because it wants the, the super glue actually bites into the plastic and then uh, like holds it in place, and then when the super glue hardens, it becomes plastic. So it, the flour itself helps to hold the, the shape of the, the, the concoction or the paste, and it also assists in the sanding process. So when it's sand, it's, it comes out easier. So yeah, that's, that's roughly the, the idea of it. But I, don't, I, I, didn't, I didn't create that concoction from like model making like gun dance and all that, they use that. Yeah. Any more questions? What do you mean by super glue gel? You mean actual super glue you just take it out? Yes, uh, super glue gel, you can get it in an upfront, but like a small bottle like this is cost like seven ninety. But before that, uh, I stopped using it because it costs way higher. When I got it, it's about four ninety. I don't know why they up the price, but it's like a blue bottle of super glue gel, and then you put it on uh, uh, like a non uh, corrosive material. I use silicon, like the leftover, so the base is like it's flexible, so I can like uh, throw it away. Then I squeeze the super glue gel, and then add some spoon of a like, little spoon of talcum powder, and then mix it together. But it hardens very fast, so you have to mix a little by little. So uh, then you put it on, and then put your parts together and then it hardens. So it's good if you want to uh, model something and join it together very fast because sometimes the party that you use to join, it takes quite some time to dry. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. It's a little unorthodox, like it's not it's not usually used but it works. Why do you find you super glue alone? Uh, because super glue alone uh, is very liquid. So when you squeeze it out, it already starts to uh, evaporate. Then when you add on the talcum powder, the, the liquid itself soaks all the powder and then hardens immediately. So the whole thing becomes a rock solid. So then you can't, you can't use as a paste. The gel actually uh, uh, dries slower. And then uh, I think 
some of the when I when I make the remote control for the BB-8, they actually say that use the gel because it doesn't flow so easily, and then you can control the the position of the button ceramic glue and all that stuff. Hmm. But the gel is expensive, so if you want to use it in regular basis, it costs money. But if it's a rust job, then it's good. Uh, it's a good alternative uh, for party. But the yeah, that one works for both PLA and ABS. So yes. No, that one it's because it evaporates very fast. I tried it before. The Tamiya cement it's very liquidy, and it's basically like acetone. So it's worse than acetone. It only works on. I uh, you don't have to actually you don't have to use the Tamiya cement with Dakon powder. But the only material you can bond is ABS because it acts like acrylic glue, so it melts the plastic and creates chemical reaction. But for the uh, super glue one, it, super glue itself is like a liquid plastic. So when it when it meets the air and moisture, it reacts, creates like a heat uh, reaction. Then after that, it becomes plastic. Yeah. But for the Tamiya cement or like the modeling cement, right? It's it's like uh, it's like acetone. It's like uh, alcohol. So when it meets the air, it evaporates easily, but it reacts to material itself. So it melts material. So it's a uh, different different thing. Yeah. So if you want to mix the cement and powder, when it dries, the part the powder still remains at powder because all the the, the material evaporates away. Yeah. But if you, if you want, you can go and try, see if it works. I might be wrong, yeah, because I don't know what brand uh, you're using or something like that. Yeah. Any more questions? Is there a difference whether you use flour or coffee powder or I'm putting recipes baking soda? Oh, um, baking soda it actually reacts because it will like bubble up. But for so you're talking about using super glue gel baking soda yes. and kind of plastic resin as well. Oh, does it react? I, I haven't had a chance to get this video. Oh, okay. Maybe you can try, but I don't know what it. I haven't tried it before, but uh, you can. You you want to try? Maybe it. So that's something interesting. Yeah, it's like imagine like volcano okay, no starts happening. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. yeah. Um, I think it's just fine powder is good enough. Maybe you can try like uh, those wood shavings or something like that. But I think talking powder Johnson and Johnson's it works. So no, no difference between the powder. And the powder. E, not that I know of, yeah. But uh, on the safe side, use talcum powder, and then it smells good also, because like baby smell. <laughs> yeah. Is that all? If not, like uh, the BB-8 head is over there, then uh, I'll plug in the electronics later so you can see that it makes noise and all that stuff. And uh, if there's any questions, you can just approach me later on. And I'll hand over to Leon. Thank you.